This is Jared from Commit Quality, and in this video, we're going to go through how to install and set up Playwright for .NET C Sharp. If you haven't already, you will need to install Visual Studio to follow along with this tutorial. You can Google Visual Studio installation, um, click on Microsoft's link, and you can download the community version of that to get started. It's completely free and easy enough to set up on there. Once you've done that, you should be meted with the kind of screen I have. Uh, if it's your first uh, setup, you won't have anything here look blank. But what I want you to do is say continue without code. Now, what we want to do is create our project. So I'm happy with my project living inside this location here, but you might want to change it to something else. If you're not seeing any um, terminal, you can go to view and click on terminal, and that will give you either your developer PowerShell or your developer command prompt. Both are okay for now. However, we will want to be using PowerShell a little bit later on in this video. So what I'm going to do in here is just set up my NUnit project. So I'm going to say .NET new n unit dash n and i'm going to name it uh commit quality practice you can name it whatever you want this is just what the project name is going to be and we say and we create a new n unit project the reason we use an n unit is because that's what playwright recommends and suggests and says it's what they state in their documentation as what they use now you can use other test runners like ms test or whatever else you want but for my series i'm going to be sticking to n unit so let's hit enter on that and here we go the project's been set up we can now say clear and what i want to do is if i hit ls now i just want to cd into commit quality practice because this is where the project lives let's clear that as well to keep it nice and clean with that with us moved into this project now i also want to open the project in visual studio so i can see the solution explorer files here to do this you do file open project or solution i'm already inside where the project lives so i can click into commit to quality practice click on commit quality practice cs project and hit open and what you'll see is we have the unit test file here which is just a basic kind of example of how you'd structure an n unit unit test and you have the using statement to say we use in the n unit framework we actually don't need this unit test so let's delete it so the next thing we want to do is actually install playwrights dependencies and there's two different ways you can do this you can say in the terminal dot net add package and then we type the package we want so in our case it's microsoft dot playwright dot n unit however if you don't want to do that and you want to use visual studio's ui capabilities you can go to tools nuget package manager manage packages for solution and you can search for the package you want here so if i just copy this a moment and i go to browse and paste it in if i hit enter what you're going to see is I can install it from here. And at the moment, the latest version is 1.32.0. So I could select this and hit install, but instead I'm just gonna hit enter because I've already typed it in my terminal. And what you'll see is once this is installed, it'll update here as well. So here we are, you can now see that the commit quality practice project that I set up now has the Playwright N unit NuGet package. Okay, great, so let's close that down and we'll just clear the terminal. The next thing we wanna do is build our project. And the reason for this is we need to build the project to output the PowerShell script that's used to install uh, all the required browsers and kind of any operating system dependencies. Just to show you what I mean, if I open this project in File Explorer and go to bin and debug, at the moment in .NET 7.0, there's nothing here because we haven't built the project yet. But when we do build the project, because we installed the Playwright dependencies, the Playwright NuGet package, this will generate with a bunch of things for us, which we can then use to install the rest of the things we need. Like I said, the required browsers. You might have something different in .NET 7.0 if you're using a different framework version. But typically, if you follow the bin debug and whatever version you're working on, then you will be in a similar position to where I am. So like I said, you can do two, there's two ways of doing this. You can right click and say build, and that will build everything for you, which is what you'll probably see me doing most of the time. But since we've been using the terminal, I just want to show you the other approach as well. And you can just say .NET build in here, hit enter. And we should see that 
builder succeeded and zero warnings and zero errors and that's all because we haven't actually done anything yet all we've done is set up a project and installed new git packages but if i go back to the folder explorer what we see now is a bunch of things generated if i scroll down you can see this playwright powershell script and this is what we're going to have to execute that's going to install the browsers and other dependencies for us so to do this in terminal you can say powershell so pwsh bin debug net 7.0 is my version if yours is different of course change it here and then you've got playwright.ps1 install with depths if I hit enter on this, this should install everything for install everything for us. What I do want to say as well is you might actually get an issue saying the term PWSH PowerShell is not recognized. It'll say that it's not recognized, and that's probably because you don't have PowerShell uh, downloaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description to PowerShell. You can click that, download it. It's from the Microsoft website. If you don't trust the link in the description, you can Google it yourself. Just say download PowerShell, and it'll take you through what you need to do. You will want to install that so you can get these dependencies. If I actually open up chrome what you can do is when you're on this page you can say download powershell you can go to the msi bundler select this and then it'll download for you and you can just install from this once it's all downloaded now this is basically set up for us we're actually ready to execute our first test so i actually deleted the unit test which probably wasn't the best idea but what we can do is say add new item here and let's say um we'll just say example dot cs and this is going to create us a new c -sharp file, which is what we're going to use to execute our first test. Now, I'm actually going to take the code from the Playwright website for now, because I just want to show you how we execute a test. And then in the next video, we'll go over breaking down exactly what we have seen. So I'm going to go to Playwright's documentation. I'll put a link in the description to this as well, for this as well. And um, if you scroll down, you can go to add example tests. Make sure you've got the N unit tab selected because we are working in N unit. I'm going to copy all this code, which is basically go into Playwright's website. It's expecting title on the page to be specific text. I'm going to create a locator. We're going to do another assertion on it. It's going to click that get started locator that we defined up here. And then it's making sure that the URL has navigated away and changed. So let's go into our test. Let's cop let's paste the code over everything in here and this is now our first test and what you might have noticed to the left of my screen i've got something called the test explorer and that's just updated with one new test if you don't see this you can go to test and click on test explorer and it'll pop out and appear for you i can build the solution so if i right click and build to make sure there's no problems with the example test we just set up one succeeded so all is good and now we can actually look at executing our test. Once again, you can do this from terminal or you can do it from your test explorer. So let's just show you test explorer first. You can right click the top level and it'll run everything. So if you had multiple tests, it would execute everything. Or you can scope down to the test you want. And if I click run, what we should see is this should pass and you should have a green tick here. It passed, it'll all run in headless as well because by default it runs headlessly and let's show you how we can do a bit of the command line execution as well so in our developer powershell let's get rid of those let's see make sure you did inside the project because this one wasn't so let's say commit to quality practice let's clear that so now what we can say is .NET test on its own hit enter and that will execute all the tests that it finds for us so in this case found the one you can see here passed failed zero passed one skipped and you can see duration took one second now uh, you can also make things headed and you can change browsers to whatever you want i'm going to create an actual cli video all on this so it goes into a bit more depth but as a thank you let's just show you how you can make this headed instead so i can say .NET test because that's how we execute the test and i could say hyphen hyphen playwright dot launch options dot headless equals false and if i hit enter on this oh there was a problem here let's just make sure i spelled everything it's because we 
didn't put the space in here so what you'll see now is that will execute just clear that and uh, it'll pop up in head mode and you'll see it it'll go very quick because it is a fast test however like i said there is going to be future videos on command line arguments and how you can pass different things in the next video i'm going to break down this test and go through the anatomy of a playwright.net n unit test uh, future videos are going to cover things like command line how to use run settings we're going to be using kind of visual studios interface a lot more i want to focus Focus on the command line in this one just so you kind of have both views of how you could do it via the UI in Visual Studio and via the command line. But as always, any questions, please drop a comment below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. Have a good day.